Okay, would you prefer my camera flip sideways? Absolutely, a thousand percent. Okay. <laughs> How's that? Perfect, yeah. Perfect. I think um, I had uh, Dorian on and he had, it, he had it up and down the whole time and I, uh, <laughs> I wish I would have said something. Uh, okay. <gasps> oh boy i know normally it's just like straight up so i'm like you know what i just noticed and i was like might look mm -hmm. better this way well it's funny because on instagram you want to have it up and down because it's really easy for the stories right but everywhere else you want to have it sideways i know they can't you make it they can't make it universal like with everything no you, you gotta wish. make it difficult yeah, yeah. it's uh somebody's out somebody out there is making money off it for sure exactly so Abby, run us through your contest prep. You're one day out from your second pro show. Uh, yes. Very excited. Lots to talk about here, but uh, walk us through how you're feeling and, and how prep's gone so far. Oh my gosh. This prep has been quite a journey. I'm not going to lie, um, especially compared to my first like pro show that I did back in December. Yeah, um, yeah. And just to bring it back to December, that was the first time I had stepped on stage for the physique round since 2018. So for fitness as an amateur, in 2017, when I started, they still had the physique round and the routine round. Right. As of 2018, they actually took out the physique round for amateurs. So your whole judging was based off your routine, not your wow. physique. Wow. Um, so I ended up competing in both figure and fitness for two competitions in 2018. But after that, I decided to just focus and stick with fitness. Um, so that was the last time I had done the presentation round. Now we still dial in our physique somewhat and cause we want to look good on stage as well, right. but to the extreme and to the extent that we need to go up and actually present our physique, um, we didn't really need that. Um, so that first prep was a new challenge a little bit because mm. it was a little bit more extreme than what I had been used to the previous few years. Right. Uh, so, which was amazing. And I actually only did a 10 week prep for my wow. first pro debut. Um, I was at a really healthy, um, somewhat already lean state to begin with. So we didn't really have to do anything drastic. It was a smooth prep, felt healthy, great throughout. Um, wow. I don't want to say it's easy. It's not easy, but like, a 10 week like, prep is not easy. So, wow. No. And food, like besides obviously dropping like any type of sugar or any, anything like that, like carbs stayed pretty high until maybe about four -ish weeks out. And it was just a very healthy, smooth prep. Um, and probably the leanest I had ever been, mm -hmm. um, this prep round, it was a challenge. It was a completely different experience. So I ended up starting at about 15 weeks out, which is it's like a standard. Usually I'm around 16, 15, 16 weeks out. That's what I would do in the past. Um, cause I was a little bit, um, heavier than I had started for my pro debut. Uh -huh. So I was like, that's tons of time, whatnot. Um, I had a few speed bumps along the way where I plateaued and I think a, a lot of it had to do with stress. So I had some things happen, which, some of the things you just can't expect and things curveballs hit you and whatnot. Absolutely. So kind of just had to adapt training to that um, and go with the flow and just, we just kept pushing through. And honestly, at like six weeks out, five weeks out, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be ready. Like I mm. get that little bit of doubt, like, and I was a little nervous, but I was like, you know what, after talking with my coach, like, we're just going to stick to the plan. We're going to do what we have to do. Um, so it was a little bit of a completely different experience than the first time. Still love every second of it. I'm not, I, I, I never want to complain or anything in a prep, but, um, we did the work, we got it done. And looking back at it, I'm like, holy crap. Like we did that mentally. Like it's just mm. like a whole new person. So it, that's what I love most about prep is every prep is different. Um, some easier than others, uh, but they're always a learning experience. Like you're always learning something new, um, new challenges are thrown at you and it's just overall like crazy experience. Sorry, mm. that was a lot at once, but- um, No, you're good. Um, so yeah. so what was what was the big differences? Cause like you said, like this prep was really crazy. Was, was there anything that like really came out of the blue uh, compared to your, uh, your last prep for, for Toronto? Yes, so at about, eight-ish weeks out, um, I got COVID, mm. which 
it wasn't so that was it wasn't like it was anything severe like I felt I didn't have any crazy crazy symptoms but it was the way my body responded to it like I noticed uh, the fatigue and like like being lethargic for weeks after Mm. um and during that time like it was like my body had stalled like it was just I don't know the stress um I was I'm also in school so I'm a student like those other things so I think the accumulation of stress maybe had partly to do with it I've never experienced COVID before so that was something new that my body had never experienced so that was the one big factor um and then two or three weeks after first initially getting COVID I got into a car accident minor but was dealing with a bit of whiplash from that so and a little bit of um a shoulder injury I I had injured my shoulder years ago like seven years ago and it's something that I've worked to kind of really improve and fix Mm. uh but that kind of aggravated it and I know for the first time in like two or three years I'm like ah like it's uh, like bugging me it's it's affecting Mm -hmm. my training so we had to scale back on the intensity for a few weeks because pushing too heavy of weights was giving me headaches um even routine practice I noticed a massive difference I would get almost um like that lightheadedness feeling like because you're going full out in routine yeah yeah um so like the headache the lightheadedness it was frustrating because it's like I need to do this work like I need to get ready for the show but at the same time it's just adding more stress so it was hard for me to kind of scale back we had to manipulate training in a way that um we took we scaled back the weights and just focused on just getting a good pump getting blood into the muscle and just really focusing on form and time under tension, which Mm -hmm. honestly, like, I think was a good shock and change to my body anyways, but it was, it's annoying as an athlete when you're an athlete, like you're trying to do as much as you can. And sometimes we overdo it. Sometimes we do too much, even rest days, like rest days, like for me are so hard to take because it's like, okay, Mm -hmm. I'm only doing weights five, five days out of the week, but those other two days. Okay. Since I'm not doing weights, like I'm going to go, I'm going to like, do my routine, which is probably just as intense as weight training, like yeah, in terms yeah. of on the body. But um, so it, it's hard for me to take that rest, but I know it's important. So mm-hmm. I just kind of, after talking with my coach and just like scaling back on the training a little bit and just doing what we can, like manipulating to kind of um, do what we can, that helped a ton. But again, it was frustrating and it was weird. It was about, I think it was, I, talking to my coach it was I think it was four weeks out from the show Mm -hmm. I finally started to feel like myself again I was like my Mm. energy's up even my coach noticed it when I went and saw her she's like you just look like more alive like you look like yourself yeah um and from there on out it has just been like smooth sailing like the fastest my weights ever dropped but I think like once like I was kind of like back in my groove and less stress and I had two weeks off of school too so I think that also helped catching up on sleep oh yeah recovery yeah then the weight just started to go 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 and energy was back up and everything so it, all the pieces started to align and um my head was just in the right space mentally I was like okay you know what like we're gonna do this we, we like we can pull this off like we mm-hmm. got four weeks things are going up and we're just gonna take it from here and see what happens yeah uh how are you feeling compared to your second place finish at toronto uh last year right yes yeah so so how are you feeling uh in terms of competitiveness from you know coming into your pro debut from 2019 winning your pro card into your pro debut in 2020 at toronto uh placing second at a pretty big show and then now coming into your second pro show uh how are you feeling uh, in terms of, you know, competitiveness uh, against the competition, competitiveness against your previous showing, you know, walk us through how you're feeling. For sure. For sure. So compared to the first one, so my first show experience, I had no expe- like expectations going in. I went in just to like, I wanted to just experience as much, like take it all in as much as I could and just get the full experience. No pressure on myself, go out, have fun. Um, and getting that second place was just like a cherry on top. Like that was, yeah. that blew my mind. I was like over the moon. Um, this time around, I was like, okay, like a little bit, I am a very competitive person. So I'm like, 
more so towards myself. Like I always want to beat myself. Mm. Obviously, like it is a competitive sport. You want to do well. Um, and I have big goals. Like I'd love to get to the Olympia. Like that's Heck yeah. my biggest goal this year is to get to that stage. Um, but so routine wise, I think I've definitely stepped it up a notch. I've taken, I got some really good feedback from one of the head judges from the December show. Okay. And so I kind of took the, his feedback and tweaked my routine a bit. So I am keeping the same, similar routine. So same music, same costume, but oh, okay. I changed a good amount of the routine. Like some parts people will probably recognize it's the same endings different. Like there's some parts in between that are a little different. Um, one of the feedback I got from the judge was I do kind of too much. Like I'm too like oh, big, skill, yeah. big, skill, big skill. Like it's just nonstop movement. And they kind of want to see it like parts where it like slows down and execute and then big skill so that the big skills almost look bigger. Mm. If that makes sense. So you have kind of like, if you're doing slow parts, then the big skills stand out more. Yeah. Because if okay. you're going big, 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 then it's, it's just a lot at once for the judges to see, um, which is, that's, that's hard for me to do, but um, mm -hmm. so we kind of scaled that back a tiny bit. The other thing was they wanted me to smile more. So yes. my routine, I get very intense in my routines. So we did tweak it a bit to add in a little bit more, less aggressiveness and a little bit more smiling, I guess you could say. Uh -huh. um, so I definitely think that this will be the best routine I'm bringing to the stage to date. Um, physique wise, I'm curious because it, again, it was a little bit weird. I lost the most amount of weight that I like in a quick, in a quick time, if that makes sense. Yes. So I feel like at this point, I'm bringing a better shape to the stage. Mm -hmm. Definitely a better shape. Um, conditioning, I feel like may have been slightly better last time around. Uh, okay. But again, we'll see. Like, I'm going to see how things turn out tomorrow because it's very close. Um, and then presentation wise, I'm actually really excited for like the um, physique presentation because we made some changes to my presentation routine, my, my physique routine. And I think those changes will stand out drastically. Like my walk and just transitions flow. Um, I worked a ton on that since mm -hmm. December. Um, so I'm really excited for that as well. But yeah, so we'll see how it goes. It is a wicked, awesome lineup of fitness girls. Even though there's only five of us, mm -hmm. there's some awesome competitors competing this weekend. So it'll be awesome to share the stage with all of them. Yeah. Um, uh, help us out. Cause I'm very, like I said, super excited yeah. to learn about fitness. Walk us through uh, and I'll pull up the lineup. Um, just so, just so it helps me and my small brain for sure. Uh, walk us for sure. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, walk us through, uh, the lineup and then, uh, kind of like where people have been previously. Um, I'll try to pull up their scorecards as we go, but, um, for sure you know, you're coming off of a second win or a second place finish last year. Um, I apologize if I don't know, but um, is uh, da, 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 Andrea Glass competing? So she did the show, same show in December. She won right. that show in Qualified Olympia. So she's not competing. Um, okay. She's actually here this weekend though. She reached out to oh, me. Good. So I'm going to have to try to meet up with her. But yeah. I think she's aiming to do, I want to say that she said she's aiming to do Ben Weeder and then obviously the Olympia. Yes. Um, so I okay. think that's her plan. So she's off season right now, um, getting ready for those shows. Okay. But Danielle, you'll see on the list. She did December with me, la uh, this past December. She was, she placed third. So okay. she placed, um, third and it was also her pro debut. Um, and I've competed with Danielle since I, I, my very first show that I ever did was actually with her back in 2017 as amateurs. Mm. And we've competed together for years constantly. And um, it was kind of a special moment because when we competed together this past December, uh -huh. it was the same weekend that we did our first show together back in 2017, the same venue, same weekend. It was just like the same weekend in December, exactly four years later. We both did our pro debut coming second and finishing second and third. So um, mm -hmm. we were both over the moon and it was just so amazing getting to like share that whole experience with her because um, she's become a really, really good friend of mine. Um, and then Karina good. too. Karina also competed this past December. And I think she placed, I want to say she placed fourth. Um, mm -hmm. 
I'm not, I'm pretty sure she plays four. So, and she's an amazing competitor too. She always comes in great conditioning um, and her routines are awesome as well. Like it's a great yeah. line, like really, really great lineup. Okay. Um, Stephanie Jones. So Steph, I actually, I have competed with her in, in the past as an amateur. So we did Arnold amateur together back in 2019, uh-huh, uh-huh. as well as the Toronto pro qualifier in 2019. So wow. we haven't seen each other in a while, but it'll be awesome to share the stage with her. And she's improved so much like routine. What her routines are wicked. Her physique's insane. So it'll be awesome to share the stage with her. Wow. I kudos to you. I've never heard another competitor talk so highly of other competitors. <laughs> now, is that just a fitness division thing? Is that a so, women's thing? Or is that just a nappy thing? I mean, I think it's a little bit of, everything okay the fitness girls are very very supportive of each other like we like I have to say since I started fitness it has been the most encouraging supportive environment like even as an amateur like pros would reach out to you and like um it's just it's the environment's just so amazing backstage like we're all cheering each other on we're all supporting each other helping each other out um I know like some of the pros choreograph other pros routines like we wow. help each other out. We give each other feedback. Like, um, we have a group on Facebook, so we're always in communication. Like it is the most amazing environment. Like I, I hope, and I wish like every category was like that. I know it's not. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I know obviously it's a competitive sport. Like we're competing against each other, but we're also sharing a stage with each other. And I think, um, I think it's important to like have an encouraging environment backstage. Like we're all going through very, tough like we're all like prep is not easy like Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of camaraderie and I think because fitness is I don't want to like downgrade any other category but fitness is a little bit unique in the sense that we have to get conditioned and get to this crazy physique and deplete ourselves while still doing this crazy high intensity two minute routine yes um and a lot of people don't understand that like it's one thing even during prep as you're the food's dropping, you're doing tons of, like you're doing cardio and training and then having to do routine on top. It's tough then, but come show day when like, you you don't have as much water in you, you're a little bit dehydrated, Mm -hmm. um, all those different factors, like the body's not meant to be doing high performance activity in that kind of state. So it's a challenge. And I think the fitness girls just have a lot of camaraderie with each other because we understand like, it's a tough sport. Like, We do a lot of crazy stuff. And so that support's so amazing to have while competing. Mm, That's nice to hear. Uh, It's unfortunate because I've noticed in some divisions, you know, I've only competed in like small natural shows so far. uh, But those guys backstage, like we were so, the environment was so different than what I expected because everyone was so supportive. And like you picked out the one or two guys that were just like crazy shred. And you're like, bro, how are you natural? Like how, why are you here? And they're like, I don't know, I, don't know, I just work out a lot. And I'm like, you're so humble. Like, it just blew my mind. Cause I was like, I thought everyone was like, going to be like really zoomed in. And uh, like, I'm a, I'm a social media guy. So like, I'm all about like trying to like promote things. Hence what I'm doing here now. Uh, yeah. But it's super interesting to see the difference of like how some shows and some divisions like fitness, uh, like you talked about are way more supportive of the athletes and um, friendly towards each other. And then you look at, Yes. Not all men's physique, not all men's bodybuilding, but uh, I've heard some things about some of the things that men's physique people stay, uh, say to each other on stage. And I'm like, goodness, like, I don't even know how you'd be able to like just stand there. Like it's, and then it's unfortunate. Crazy. Yeah. It's cause it's not putting, it's not, it's not lifting each other up. It's not being promotive. No. It's, it doesn't put bodybuilding in a good light. Um, you know, nothing against blessing uh, a Wodabu, like the dudes of social media phenom. Uh, but like just how he carried himself at, I think it was the indie pro. Like I was not a fan, like just the way he was talking to people. And, and then I heard some other people backstage saying like, uh, it wasn't just a show on stage. Like that's how he presented himself the whole time. I'm like, it's, not, uh, it's kind of unfortunate, you know, because especially no, he's like, sure. he's going to be a big name. So for sure, I don't know. for sure. And it is unfortunate because I I've heard a lot of things too. And in different categories and the way people treat each other backstage. And I don't know if it's them trying to get another competitor's head to get an advantage, but I feel like if you've put in the work and 
like you're going in, like you got to be confident with yourself. And if you've done everything you can, like ultimately you're competing against yourself. Like you can't control what the judges are going to think. If you've gone through prep and you've stayed hundred percent committed, you've done every single thing that you've can and gone above and beyond, like you're going on stage and it's like, okay, I'm bringing my best, like getting in another athlete's head. Like, how is that benefiting me? Like, and, and does that make you feel good as a person? Yeah. Like, Cause you're you, just, like, you're putting down somebody else to maybe yeah. give yourself what, like a 2% boost maybe. Like, yes. And like, I don't know about any other athletes, but for me as an athlete, like I want my competitors to show up as their best. Yes. I like, if, if I'm going to win a show, like I want to show, like, I want to win against the best. I want them at their all time best because otherwise like, okay, if they're not at their best, like, and I am at my best or whatnot, or if you're putting somebody down and that's the reason why they don't do as well or whatnot, like, mm-hmm. did I really win? Like, I don't know. That's my mindset going in. If, if that makes sense. It does. But like, does, yeah. I want the other athletes at their best. I want them to do well. Like, mm-hmm. but yeah. Um, actually that makes me think uh one of our the friends of the channel um her name is uh desiree i was just talking to her she won her division and there was nobody else in the division uh npc competitor and i'm sure she doesn't mind me talking about her uh but like i just can't imagine like what kind of feelings you go through you know you take so long to prep and then no one shows up or maybe in other people's situations no one shows up uh, as competitive so yeah, I can imagine it would be uh, frustrating to not compete against, you know, the best uh, at that time. For sure. No, that's definitely, and it's sad because a lot of the shows this year, I've noticed the numbers going down. Like it's, I don't know if it's a COVID thing or, yeah. but like, women's bodybuilding 212. Uh, yeah. A lot of divisions are just kind of like, it's sad. no one yeah. are showing up like the Ireland pro the 212. There's only four people there. Um, the uh, San Paulo, I think, in Brazil, another two twelve. Okay. Like it was only like four guys, so it's like it's unfor- I don't, I don't, I really, I don't know. Like you mentioned, maybe it's a COVID thing. I don't know. Yeah, like, finance thing from COVID, like because of yeah. COVID. Who knows? Like because it's an expensive sport as well. But yeah. um, who knows? Hopefully, it'll pick back up, or maybe maybe athletes are all waiting to do shows closer to the the Olympia. Who knows? Yeah, but. isn't that like a strategy? I know uh, Ian Valier. He always talks about it. Like he usually does shows closer to the Olympia. Um, who was the other guy? Steve Kuklo. He always mentioned he likes to yeah. do his, the, his shows closer to the Olympia. I think it's. I think it's so. If you're doing a show close to the Olympia, and if your goal is to win that to qualify to the Olympia, then mm-hmm. you're already kind of in that condition physique, and you don't got to. You don't have to drag it out as long. It's it's a little bit no. easier on the body. Whereas if you're competing, like say like now, if I'm competing now, um, and I'm say, I want to do like a few other shows, like Mm -hmm. you got to listen to your body. Some bodies can handle it. Others can't hold up that conditioning for that long. Like it's a lot of stress on the body. So especially if your goal is to show up like peak for the Olympia, you Mm -hmm. need some leeway time in between to allow your body to rest and, um, to show up as your best. So Mm -hmm. that's kind of a strategy, I think. Yeah. Is that your strategy? Um, it, actually, this is a twofold question. So you, you only competed once in 2021, but you said that was in December, right? Yes. So that's like not very long ago. So obviously, yes. you know, you don't need to compete again because you're just going to do the Toronto again. Yeah. Was that so, kind of the strategy? As an amateur, I competed a lot. I love to compete. And I know it's not always the most strategic thing because you do need to take time away from the stage to build muscle. And I do know that. But, and it's hard for me to do that. COVID kind of forced me to do that. So I, when I got my pro card, it was August, 2019. So I didn't step back on stage until December, 2021. So that was a good two years I had to build. Um, And I think that time honestly benefited me a lot physique wise. So I think it was needed, especially before like hitting the pro stage. Mm -hmm. Now that I've hit the pro stage, I'm like, oh, like. I've gotten that high of competing again, performing. I love, like, I love to perform my routine. So I'm like, oh, I got to do it again. Um, the points from this past December go towards this Olympia. Ooh. So it's yes. a little unique in the sense that usually, like, so it's the Toronto Pro, one Toronto Pro, well, like, those points go towards that, oh, that Olympia. But yeah. because the Toronto Pro last year, it's usually in June, it was delayed and postponed to December due to COVID reasons. Um, it was after last year's Olympia. So those yep. points ha- are now 
um, go, they go towards the 2022 Olympia. So yes. these points for, from, for tomorrow, the mm-hmm. 2022 Toronto pro also go towards this Olympia. So because I played second at last year's Toronto pro Toronto pro is a show that has a good amount of points. So yeah. there's like a tier system in terms of, points. I've been trying to learn that I, I was way off. I was way off on what I thought like were tier one shows. I was way off. <laughs> yeah. So, so I might be wrong, but tier one is obviously like your Olympia, your Arnold. Yep. I want to say the Phoenix or like oh, the rising yeah. Phoenix might be, I, that would make I think sense. those are tier one tier two includes Toronto pro and fitness as a category, we don't have as many shows compared right. to like bodybuilding, that sort of thing. So we're kind of limited in our selection. So I think I want to say that Toronto is the only tier two show for us, maybe like an Arnold Australia or something like that as well. Mm-hmm. But um, so that's like our, like the show that we can get the highest amount of points at yeah. if we don't win. This so, is like your rising Phoenix. Yeah. So like that, it helps a lot this show to get, if you, if you're aiming for points. Um, so that kind of put me on the point standings. Um, I think I'm sitting in fifth right now for point standings. So I was like, okay, hmm. So the goal is this Toronto show and second through fifth place get points. So because we're, there's only five of us, it's kind of nice because it's automatic points as well. Mm -hmm. If we don't get the win. Um, and for me, I know it's not ideal to do multiple shows in a year, but I, am, I do have a few other shows planned this year. I might keep them under wraps for right now. Yeah, for um, sure. Because like I said, my goal is the Olympia. I am shooting big. Mm-hmm. I know it's kind of my full, like first full season competing as a pro, but mm-hmm. I'm shooting big and I would love to be up on that stage just for the experience, just to show oh, the yeah. stage again with the best of the best. Like yeah. there's nothing better than being up against the best of the best. Um and then just again meeting people and getting that full experience and just being in that atmosphere like show they show environment like just being here i it's not even show day yet and just being at the toronto pro and like the, well, as soon as you get in the hotel and like you're surrounded by like-minded mm-hmm. people other athletes it's just out of this world it's just it's just an unbelievable it's intoxicating so, yeah. it is it's like a high so mm-hmm. yeah so that's why i'm just excited i'm shooting big but um so yeah we'll see okay um that was a lot uh, yeah, no, you sorry. definitely <laughs> you definitely answered the question uh what got you into competing specifically in the fitness division i feel like it's a very niche uh category yeah for sure so i was a gymnast so i was a gymnast okay. f- uh, competitively for eight years so i did it all the way till end of high school wow. um so i did that I, re- I stopped after high school because I went away to university. I also ran track. So I, I ran track competitively throughout high school. I ended up going away for school and ran varsity track for my first year of university. And I had joined a gym right out of high school. So I joined a gym and I fell in love with weight training. I loved mm-hmm. it. And it kind of went hand in hand with like the track that I did as well. Mm-hmm. But I loved the feeling of lifting heavy and just the pump and just getting stronger and seeing the physique changes, loved it. And I actually met a few girls at the gym. Um, one of them, my good friend, Paulina, she's kind of like a second mom to me. I've mm. known her forever. And she kind of, she was competing. And I remember she was in prep when I, I think she was in prep when I first met her. And I was like, Oh, what is this bodybuilding? Like, I never really knew much about it. What yeah. is this bodybuilding industry? Like, what is this all about? she was like, like, I was always doing crazy stuff in the gym. I would be doing like my gymnastics, like core training, like crazy leg lift stuff, hanging on the bar and whatnot. She's like, you gotta like compete one day, girl. Uh, but it was never something that I really had thought of. Um, I went away to school, ran track for a year and it it didn't like give me that. I don't know that satisfaction, like gymnastics did like that challenge. Like Mm -hmm. it was still was a challenge, but I was used to training like 20 plus hours a week for gymnastics and doing these crazy competitions, these crazy skills and track was still an awesome challenge, but it wasn't the same. Okay. Um, so then I started thinking bodybuilding in the back of my head again. And I, at this point I didn't even know about fitness mm. and somebody had reached out to me and was like, are you looking for a coach? Like, I know this coach, Mindy O'Brien, like you should reach out to her. And I was like, how does this person even know that I'm thinking of competing and blah, 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 blah. Anyways, I ended up 
looking more into bodybuilding, contacted my coach, Mindy, who was a fitness Olympian. She's an 11 time Olympian, actually qualified God. 12 Olympias, competed in 11, probably one of the best role models I could have ever asked for. And when I first got in touch with her, she was like, you're a gymnast. Like, why aren't you, like, you should be doing, like, you should do fitness. And I was like, what the heck is fitness? Yeah. So she was the one who really introduced me to fitness. And I was like, this is like the perfect thing for me. It's combines the gymnastics, but also the weight training, the strength training, um, building that muscle and whatnot, putting mm-hmm. it all together. It was everything I love doing into one sport. And it is like the ultimate challenge. Gymnastics was a challenge. It's a tough sport mentally, but you don't have that food aspect where like you are restricted and whatnot. So bodybuilding, yeah. it added this whole new element of challenge. Um, and I, I thrive off the challenge. I love, I love a good challenge. So I think that's why I love this sport so much. Mm. Yes, it's hard, but I love it. Um, but yeah, Mindy was, she's been such a good role model and she's coached me since day one. So she's been my coach and been by my side since day one. So, wow. So that's kind of how I got into it. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't I see Mindy's name on the scorecard? You sure did. Okay. And I was like, is she competing? She is competing. So she, so she retired on the Olympia stage in 2016. Yeah. Yeah. From women's physique. So she did women's physique the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Um, She ended up doing a bikini pro show in 2017. Yeah. I saw that. But then after that, she was done. She's right. like, I'm going to stick to coaching, whatever. And I was like, I always thought in the back of my mind, I'm like, this she girl done. can't not compete again. <laughs> like, she just loves the sport too much. But she didn't tell anybody about this yeah. show. She told me and one of my other teammates, I think it was like maybe two weeks out, week and a half, wow. two weeks out. And she's like, just so you know, like I'm competing. And I think she was a little ner- like worried that like, I don't know, that she would be competing the same weekend, whatever. I'm like, oh my gosh, when I got the... Like when she, when I got the message from her, I was over the moon. I was so mm. excited because how special is that, that you get to, not many people get to share the stage with your coach. We're mm-hmm. doing different categories, but I get to share like that backstage experience with her and just, right. um, she's become a really good friend of mine over these years. Like we've gotten close. So to be able to share that, ex- this experience with her is amazing. And she looks ridiculous. So I'm so excited for her. Mm. Yeah, I, I remember I was listening to, um, I think I was listening to MD and they were talking about uh, how they saw the scorecard and I was like, oh, it's a, it's a typo, but that is a good point. <laughs> they did have a typo, that's right. Yeah. But yeah. That's exciting. Wow. That makes me want to, um, I just got a, a coach because I haven't competed in two years. Uh, I've had okay. so many injuries, like it just sucks. Uh, also just excuses, you know, you know how it is um well maybe you don't maybe you don't but but for me for me i, I can always have excuses um but i, yeah, I didn't even think about doing this uh, same show as him because he's an npc guy as well so that's an idea because with the plan right now is to do the amateur o uh because i want to go to las vegas i want to do oh, this i want to do this interviewing uh but i just i gotta find you know they're not gonna let me show up with a microphone and a camera guy uh, in my backdrop and just <laughs> and do interviews. So like, I have to find a way to, to get in with like MD or, um, RX muscle, or I don't know. That'd be awesome. Yeah. I'd really like to do it myself. You know, I have my own network, my brand, I have fans, sure. but like, I just, I don't know how the politics work. So I have okay. a, I have something under my sleeve I'm trying to do right now to get into like a smaller NPC show and then do their interviews. Um, I, I won't say what show, but, uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to get my foot in the door. So that's exciting. Uh, no, that's so we'll amazing. See. Good for you. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Uh, I just I feel like that's the best way to advocate for these athletes because, like, especially when you look at these smaller NPC shows, nobody even knows they happen. Unfortunately, everyone just wants to talk about you know the top six Olympians, the New York pros, like just these massive shows. But yes. I mean, there's so many other athletes out there that have so really many. exciting stories, and I just feel like there's um the ball's been dropped. So I'm trying to, I'm not really good at dribbling, but I'm trying to pick the ball up. No, I, I agree. I think, I think there could be a lot better job of just getting even just the whole bodybuilding industry as a whole out there more like to the public's yeah. like getting a better understanding of what it is, like what actually is required and what it takes and those kind of things. Um, 
because there's so much information out on online and a lot mm. of misinformation. So, but it's always awesome to hear that yeah, athlete stories and just getting just perspectives from different categories. Like you said, like you yeah. hear a lot about men's bodybuilding and the male categories, but sometimes the female categories kind of get underlooked and kind of getting some information out about that would be awesome just to kind of, cause they work just as hard. Like they do. Yeah. They and then you start talking about your, like the two minute routine on top of being like dice to the socks, like, like who's shredded, but also most bodybuilders can barely even stand there without like <laughs> just shake it. But, but you're over here doing the, the one hand to holdy with the feet going, you know, antenna wise, like, like who, who can do that? I don't know. Words are hard. Words are hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like that analogy. That was awesome. Um, but no, yeah, like the fitness routines, they're they're no joke. I'm not gonna lie. Like they're fun. I love them. And but they're it's tough. It's it's crazy. And I and I also one thing I do I want to say I love about fitness is it's so unique in the sense that there's people from all different backgrounds. Like some are gymnasts, so you'll mm. see a lot of flipping and whatnot, a lot of power. But then you also get dancers or like rhythmic gymnasts or just contortionists where they're just, they're more on the flexibility side and you kind of get to showcase mm. your strengths. Um, there's no kind of like, there's a small set criteria. So there are four mandatory skills that you have to have. Yep. Um, so you need a push up, a high kick, the splits, um, and a straddle hold. Okay. Um, Is the straddle hold the little handsy thing I was talking about? No. So it's more of like you're kind of upright and like you're pushing your body with like, just kind of like, if you imagine you're sitting like in like a straddle position on the ground, oh, yep. you just lift off yep. the ground. Yep, um, so, and the push up could be any type of push up. Like it could be a one arm push up. It could be just your, a standard push up. Yeah, could the, be a crazy. Push yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So as long as you have those four skills in your team, you can make up the rest of your team, however you want. So mm. that's why you see so much variation in routines at times because you kind of play to your strengths. You kind of showcase what, um, yeah, what your strengths are. Now there are like judging criteria in the sense of like, they're looking for power. They're looking for strength. They're looking for flexibility, yeah. um, endurance. So like the, the high energy, like, can you maintain that same energy throughout the routine or do you start to fade and get tired at the end? Like, is it noticeable? Those kind of things. But overall, you kind of get to make it up how you want to make it up, which is awesome. Mm. Wow. You can really make it your own. And I, I, I didn't even think about like contortionists and in like dancers. Like I would have never thought that like that would be something that they incorporate. Sure. So, uh, I'll even, definitely have um, to watch more. Yeah. No, for sure. There's even like, I know personally some athletes, um, one off the top of my he uh, head, Anna, Anna a Adams, I want to say I've competed. I competed with her at Arnold amateur. She has no gymnastics dance background at all. Even I'm pretty sure Danielle competing this weekend. I don't, she doesn't have much of a gymnastics or dance background either. She mm -hmm. actually, she learned how to back tuck, standing back tuck at age 30. Like that wow. blows my mind. Like she, the progress she's made since I met her back in 2017, her skills have improved so much. And the fact that she's learning how to backflip at her age, it's hard to do. It's not easy mm -hmm. to learn those skills that the older you get. So I can imagine. Um, yeah. Yeah, some of these athletes have no background at all. They're learning these skills like in their 30s and whatnot. So mm. it's like to shout out to any athletes out there, like you don't have to be a gymnast. You don't have to be a cheerleader to do fitness. Like you can put in the work and learn these skills and compete in fitness. Mm. Um, so yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh man, that's a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> this is, I'm just I'm, I'm just trying to absorb it all. Um Let's let's talk meat and potatoes. So you said you train five days a week and you have two days rest. What does your typical training look like for an IFBB pro fitness competitor? Okay. So I do five days a week of weight training. That's typically okay. what I do. So that's weight, like that's specifically weight training. And, and what kind of Cardio, split is that? Uh split. So my split uh has been legs, quad focus, more quad focus, but legs, um, shoulders and triceps. Uh, back and biceps, rest day, mm -hmm. um, legs again, but more glute hamstring focus, and okay. then chest and shoulders. Okay. So Pretty that's solid. my split. Um, the two re rest days, I should have a rest full days. day rest, but rest days, <laughs> my rest days are usually um, 
fitness routines. So yeah. I will go in and I'll do a full fitness routine uh, practice, sometimes touching up on like just some individual skills after. Um, and then I'll usually cardio, I'll usually do six to seven days a week. So yeah, the days where I'm doing my fitness routine, it, it, it'll usually be like a one day gym set, like one time gym session on like my mm -hmm. rest days. So it'll be routine cardio and posing. I pose every mm -hmm. single day. Posing Good. underrated, like athletes who don't pose every day, like you should be posing every day. Yep. Like master the mandatories. Thing. Exactly. So yep. those days will be, yeah, like routine cardio pose stretch mm -hmm. pretty long gym session but like we get it done um so yeah i really only do my routine twice a week but mm -hmm. that i think is like like that's a good an amount for me um and i i don't know if i mentioned before but like previous shows i used to only train it about once a week and not mm -hmm. as intense as I, as I do now and okay. i would notice a difference on stage like i would get to stage and i'm like okay, like I should have put in a little bit more work. And so mm -hmm. for my pro debut, I went like hardcore, like twice a week, like, and it's tough. Like it's, again, it's not easy training these routines, especially like when you don't have an, like you don't have people there cheering you on and yeah, audience, that adrenaline, like you got to put yourself through these routines by yourself and repetition, repetition. Mm -hmm. um, and and keep smiling. <laughs> and you got, yeah, and <laughs> keep smiling. But um, I do love it. It's just, it is, it's, that's probably the hardest part, like getting near the end of prep. The hardest mm. part for me, it's not posing's hard. That's underrated, especially as you get close to prep. Posing's yes. hard. Training is not hard for me. The posing's not difficult. The food, the prep, like that's not hard for me. It's the routine as your energy starts to kind of, it's not a ton of like a big drop in energy, but it's noticeable and it does yeah. affect the routine. And, um, but yeah, so yeah, so that's kind of my training, like twice a week routine practice. Now I might do like some skills throughout the week. So like, say like on like a shoulder day at the end of shoulders, I might do some like handstand work. So just oh. while I'm fatigued, I'll do that. Or on my chest day, I always start my chest workouts with my pile pushups. Um, hmm. So one, it kind of primes the muscle, like an explosive. Yep. So if you think like I work with athletes in like sport performance, so you want to like uh, kind of program things in terms of like, you always start with power then you get into like your strength work. And then you kind of like your accessory work because mm. um, your power work, you should always tra be training power work at hundred percent intensity when you're primed and ready. Cause that's how it's going to get better. Interesting. I mean, you can, yeah. You can huh. do it. Fatigue I think I've been doing well, it wrong all my life. <laughs> <laughs> now, I always like, used to put yeah. like my big stuff, like this, a big squat, big bench, power cleans. I used to always put it at the back. Cause I'm like, okay, I'm warmed up. I'm ready to go. Let's finish it off strong. Yes. Now it depends where your goals are. Like if your goals are hypertrophy, go for it. Like, uh -huh. cause then you're kind of doing those bigger lifts at like a little bit more fatigued. Yeah. But if you're an athlete and your goal is like sport performance, cause as a fitness yeah. competitor, you kind of have to like think both. It's you obviously are aiming for hypertrophy. You need to build a physique, but you also need that performance aspect where you're working power to improve your jump height and uh, okay. the, and stuff like that. So for my plyo pushups, I, while sometimes mm. I will train them at a, at the end of a training session, just to make sure I can do them while I'm tired, uh -huh. um, to actually improve the overall aspect of like the individual skill itself. I always start with it because you want to be able to, be, you want to train it at hundred percent intensity because that's how it's going to improve. Um, so I'll always, and, and it also helps prime that muscle and get it yes, ready absolutely. for my lift. So once I kind of go through some of those sequences, I go and I get, get into my chest workout and I, and I feel great. I like the tendons and everything are all warmed up and whatnot. So, so yeah, so there'll be skills kind of trained throughout the week as well, but actual routines, um, we'll go through like one or two full routines, like hardcore. And then what I'll do is I'll actually just work parts. Mm -hmm. Um, just so I can actually work on execution. Cause I'm at a point where like the routine's pretty conditioned as long as like I can run through it fully. Well, not completely. Yeah. My, like I'm not yeah, dead yeah, again. Yeah. So what I do is I break it up into halves and I'll do like the first part, um, making sure everything's executed as well as I can. Um, and then I'll work on the second part. And sometimes for a conditioning aspect, I'll do the first part of the routine and then immediately I'll do some like extra skills or something to completely fatigue myself just to work oh, that conditioning, wow. something like that. Or you could even do like sprints afterwards or something like that. But yeah, I would, 
I would never think after practicing, po- I mean, like bodybuilding posing is a lot different, but even if I did like routine, I'd never think to like go do interval sprints immediately after. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I always think of posing as like a skill thing, but, but for fitness, I mean, it really is like a combination of both skill and, um, beauty, I guess. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's both. It, no, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Which, yeah. And again, that's why I love it. But, uh, and then the one other thing I didn't touch on is, uh, visualization is a huge thing. So I used to do this all the time as an, as a gymnast. Um, and it's actually something that my coach really, um, preached as well, which is why I, I love working with her. Mindy always does this as well. She implements a lot of visual visualization, journal work, that sort of thing, like that mindset work. Mm. But um, I actually like before a competition, like the last time I practiced my routine was Tuesday. I don't like to do it too close. Like mm. I know like once I hit one, like a, like a week out or a couple of days before, like I'm good. I don't like to do anything too aggressive rate right immediately. Like the day, day one to three days beforehand. I don't want to risk injury. Like I already know that yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. Um, so I'd rather just kind of coast in. So what I do is I do a lot of visualize visualization. So I'll either put my headphones in with my routine music mm. and like visualize myself oh, nailing wow. my routine. Um, or like during cardio sessions, that's on repeat. Like that's constantly what I'm doing through cardio. Makes the time go by faster too, oh. which is constantly routine, routine, routine. Posing routine as well. Like as an athlete, like I that's one of the biggest tools that's helped me. Um And I'll even preach to like athletes I train, like outside of bodybuilding, like visualize that, like you doing it perfect over and over again in your head, because you can visualize it and believe it too. Like you're going to go on stage and you're going to nail it. Like, yeah. So I definitely struggle with, um, positive self-talk of like, not, not like talking myself up. And if you watch the podcast, like being a person that hasn't even done an NPC show yet, talking okay. with some of the top pros in the world, it's uh it's a really weird situation. And uh, I definitely talk myself down. So I, I like how you talked about the, the um, visualizing visualization. Cause that's like, yeah, I would never think to like, I think um, my song right now is like space cadet by uh, I don't know who it is, but it's like, a I'm not, well, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to get into it, but like, <laughs> but like every time I hear that song, I think about like the transitions and like and just like flowing through things. So like I guess I never thought about it, but like yeah, whenever that song comes on, I'll probably post that song. Uh good. Yeah, yeah. no, that's awesome. Yeah, I would never think that, but yeah. Okay. Hm. Yeah, give it like honestly, like put yeah. the song on and like visualize yourself doing it. Like it's and it helps, like it really yeah. does. So but okay. Yeah. Um I know you're super busy. Um, I wanted to, I mean, everyone had talks about nutrition. Like, is there anything like crazy you do for nutrition? That's like different, like dietary restrictions, or is it pretty like standard, you know, five, six meals? Uh, I do like a standard. I've been doing five meals lately. Like I've done six in the past. I'd say like the past two ish years, it's been about five meals. And I like, I thrive off of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I typically go like aim for about like every three hours, eat yeah. every three to four. Yeah. Um, usually in my prep, like I try to keep in, like, I'm very like health-based. Like I like to eat things that are like good for me, keeping inflammation down Mm. one less uh, added stress on your body. If you're eating things that um, aren't great, like I, I don't do cheap, cheap meals throughout prep. If anything, Mm. if my coach gives me a refeed, it's just um, extra food that I'm used to. So like we bump up the oats or something like that. Um, I like to just keep it clean. I do love my food though. I'm not gonna lie. I do have a big sweet tooth. So after show, like Mm. I do enjoy it. Yeah, you're gonna get one of those big monster cookies. I, I, I should go grab them. I, but you already Kyla bought them. <laughs> a, my friend Kyla has a cookie company called Kai Kai Cookies. Oh, good. And she's Channel also plug. an IFBB pro. And her cookies are so addicting. So I ordered a few. So I already have a box like sitting here, like mm. I need down in my room. But they're one of my favorite go tos. That or cheesecake. But oh yeah, um, cheesecakes. But yeah, throughout like a prep, like um. I try to avoid sugar at all costs, obviously, but, um, I like to implement things like beef liver, uh, bee pollen. Like there's, there's little things that are just like really good. Um, sauerkraut for gut health. Uh, okay. I've heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. So kombucha. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So like, I like to implement things like that. And I do like to like, I eat a lot of greens, a lot of vegetables. I like to like kind of eat like a really good whole food diet, like a standard Mm. bodybuilder, but like 
I do eat a lot of fiber, a lot of, a lot of veggies. Um, and then uh, like closer to the show right now, cause we did have to do a little bit more extreme cause of the way this prep went. Um, so we did cut back the food a little bit more than I'm used to, but still mm-hmm. just keeping it clean, like high protein, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. high protein, a lot of fish, asparagus, mm-hmm. uh, potato. We did some drier carbs this time around just to help dry me out. But, um, yeah, I use your standard. Yeah. Five meals, mm-hmm. healthy fats, whatnot. Okay. Um, supplementation. Do you do any, uh, do you do any like protein powders, uh, aminos multi yeah. whatever yeah, I, don't I, mean. do, I don't go too too crazy on the supplementation i do use protein powder um we cut it out i think about i think it was around two weeks out we cut that out mm-hmm. um and we just switch no maybe three weeks out and we just switch to like like fish chicken like that was it um but i usually use protein powder on like a daily basis so that's one thing um I didn't really use aminos this time around. I usually do. I just, there was just one thing I was like, save money. I didn't, yeah, didn't get yeah. it. Um, creatine I'll use occasionally. Um, I did use it at the beginning of this prep and cut it out probably four weeks, four or five weeks out. Right. But um, and you cut that out for, because it has that water retention. Aspect. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. Um, but yeah, I was like, oh yeah, it's not something I do like all the time. Um, I don't even think I, I think it had been a year or two and I was like, you know what, maybe we'll, we'll try some creatine again. So, yeah. and that's one of the highest tested supplements out there. So mm-hmm. it is highly tested. Um, besides that, uh, digestive enzymes, I'll take, okay. uh, omegas. Mm-hmm. What else? Multivitamins, joint support. Um, I don't take a, a multivitamin only because I usually do keep beef liver in for most of the time. And that is uh-huh. honestly the best multivitamin you could take. Really? I like to preach that. Beef liver. Okay. Yeah. Only because hmm. some ultimate multi- some multivitamins are great, but some you just gotta kinda watch the ratio on certain things. Um, like your what is it? Uh magnesium calcium. Sometimes their calcium's like too high compared to magnesium. I think magnesium should be a little bit higher than it is in some multivitamins. Uh-huh. Um so that's why I do beef liver. I do take a magnesium supplement. That's one supplement I will preach. Um, hmm. I will take that before bed. Um, any reason why? Uh so we are I'm a dummy, very, so I don't know. No, so. no, no. Magnesium, I think, is one of the most un, like I know a lot of athletes do take it, but it is an underrated supplement in the sense that we are very stressed out individuals. Like we have yes. so much, like just the way things are in this day and age, like technology. Like it's we're constantly surrounded by lights and all this. Like yeah, I got a lot of lights in here. <laughs> you like we're overstimulated to begin with, but then you yes. add like work stress, mental stress, environmental stress. That's one thing we can't even control. Plastics. There's all this stress and stress actually depletes the body of magnesium. And okay. most hmm. individuals are deficient in magnesium. They may not know it, but it is hmm. a mineral, like from what I've studied and yeah. looked into, it is a mineral that is very deficient in a lot of individuals. So um, I think it's probably one of the best that you can take. Like I, I've noticed a big mm. difference with it. It also helps depending on like the form you take, but I take mm. by, bi- uh, by, I'm going to push the name, but by glycinate, um, it, it does help kind of like calm you down too. So okay. can it can have some benefit for sleep. If you really have a hard mm. time sleeping, um, not anything crazy, but it's mm. supposed to help relax you. Um, so that's why I take it before bed, but interesting. Um, yeah, it helps. So it helps kind of, yeah, restore those things and it can actually help. It has something to do with, I'm going to get this wrong, but it has something to do with them, our mitochondria too. So energy production, we mm. need my, like we need magnesium. So if we're depleted because we're always so stressed out, um, we're not going to be um, as energy efficient, if that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. just making sure that we have adequate magnesium in our diet, I think so important. Okay. I will preach that. So yeah, oh. so that's a big one that I will I will utilize. Um, besides that, I think yeah, digestive enzymes, magnesium. Oh, uh, vitamin E I'll take. Um, vitamin and then E. I'll take vitamin E. Um, mm-hmm. And then I'll also, I haven't the past few months just because I ran out, but I probably should. Vitamin C I will also take, but I'll take um, not ascorbic acid, which is usually what you'll find in vitamin C. I'll take uh, like a pure form of vitamin C. So it's still capsule, but it comes from, uh, natural sources like camu camu or what else is there? 
usually it's camu camu, but there's other things. It's like natural sources of vitamin C. So not your ascorbic okay. acid. Um, oh. Something else I had looked into where too much ascorbic acid isn't the best for the body either. Cause it's kind of like mm. an artificial form, form, I guess you could say. Okay. Um, I'm not going to get too sciencey, but I, that's for I the do. next episode. Yeah. 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 I'll have to, we'll have to bring you back on after the show. Cause like, <laughs> you're just like so much knowledge. And I'm like, Oh, uh, I got like two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I know I, I could ramble on about all this, like anything fitness, nutrition oh, related forever. But yeah, so that's about it that I'm taking. I'm not taking yeah. anything too, too crazy. Okay. Oh, huh. maybe we can, um, maybe you can, you can drag Mindy on for a post-show recap. Yes, that would That'd be, be awesome. I'll have to talk to her. I'm sure yeah. she would be down for that. Yeah. I, uh, I'll clear my schedule. You just let me know. Um, okay. uh, last thing, no one yeah. really talks about recovery. Do you do anything crazy specific? Like, my coach has me using my Theragun because my wife bought me like the really freaking nice one and it just sits there. So yeah, yeah, I started yeah. using that. Uh, I used to go and get like deep tissue work, which was like oh, amazing yes. um, and cupping and Degrassi and all that stuff. Yep. Like, do you do things of that nature? Yes. So one, well, one minor thing that I've been doing um, a lot more frequently is Epsom salt baths. So oh, I've yeah, been doing okay. those like one or two times a week, which I notice has helped. Mm -hmm. um massage usually I will do like once a week leading up to a show I was only able to do one leading up to this show at about three weeks out but still I find that so beneficial um so massage I'll do and then the one other thing I do is chiropractic so oh. I'm actually in school for chiropractic right now oh, so okay. like I know the benefits so I'm like okay and being in school we get free chiropractic care heck yeah so, so it's been amazing so like leading up to the December show, leading up to this show, like I go once a week mm -hmm. just to get adjusted. And that honestly just helps keep everything. Like, I just, I don't know. Everything just feels great for training. I yeah. know that my body's in good alignment and everything's feeling good, moving good, um, going into every training session, that sort of thing. So I've honestly, like that's made a big difference. Okay. Um, yeah. you mentioned chiropractic, um, good friend of the channel and probably one of my favorite competitors, uh, Megan Santana Barbara. Have you heard of her? Okay. That sounds familiar. Yeah, it's uh Megan Scooby Prep. Okay. I'll have to look, look her. I yeah, can't yeah. picture, she, but like she does um right. yeah, she's she's in school for chiropractic and um she was doing what's the one right before women's bodybuilding? Is it physique uh, or physique? figure? Physique? Women's physique? Yeah, yeah. So she was doing physique and I mean she's an absolute juggernaut. Um but she, she recently announced she's gonna do wellness. Uh just I think she it's better on her body awesome. so love her super excited to see her get back on stage but uh shameless plug uh, one of my favorite athletes so oh, I'll have to I, I, I have like my list of people that I always follow so I try to That's plug them awesome. as much as I can I'm just hey I'm a fan at the end of the day I mean I'm just a fan I love bodybuilding no, so. oh I am too honestly like this sport is just it's just something different like it's so different it's, it's awesome. so neat yeah it is. It really is. And it's just, yeah, the whole sport in itself is just, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for recovery, in terms of recovery, that's pretty much what I do. Stretching too. I mean, your standard, just stretch, oh. like post, post lift yeah. stretch, like, especially I, as in fitness, like we got to maintain our flexibility while putting on muscle. Sure. So it's, a, yeah. it's definitely an important factor. Okay. I did um, legs yesterday. I tried legs. Uh, and then I put my, I put my butt on the wall and then let my legs like fall down yes. like sideways. Yeah. Oh, good Lord. Wow. <laughs> wow. That was humbling. <laughs> I I have some of my, um, some of uh, my hockey athletes. I coach like younger hockey athletes, okay. um, not currently, but in the past. And we would always do that stretch. And that was one of their favorites. They loved it because mm. hockey players, like they get very, very tight adductors, like very mm. tight. And so, yeah, we just have them go up against the wall drop their legs and they could just stay there for hours painful but oh yeah i was drenched there's a puddle just a puddle but uh oh, boy i'm gonna have to get more canadians on because i'm from wisconsin originally and okay. i feel like i've lost my accent but i when every every once in a while you'll say something like oh, i miss home it's been a long <laughs> time so uh i gotta get more canadians on here I, oh, I, do I have a Canadian accent? I've got, oh, that. for sure. Yeah. yeah. You I say your school. O's and your A's and, uh, I love it. I love it. I so. say A a lot and I actually go to school in Buffalo. So okay. yeah. I, I, a lot of my friends in my program are American and they make fun of me all the time because 
I will say A and I'll like drag it out. I'll be like yeah. A. E. And they'll, and then Don't they'll make you know fun a. of me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. realize I say it so much, but. It's just natural. You don't even like, it I didn't is. realize I had a Canadian accent living from, you know, from Wisconsin, which is pretty much like Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, I didn't <laughs> notice I had an accent until I moved like to the Midwest for the military. Uh, and then they just started mentioning it. I'm like, oh yeah, I guess I do have an accent. And they're like, how do you say bag? I'm like, bag? <laughs> and I guess that's not how you're supposed to say bag. I don't know. That's... I don't, I, I, I'll never say it right. I say bag. bag. They say bag. Last thing, funny story. Okay. Uh, my wife and I were in Wisconsin and she went to the grocery store, which is called Dick's. Very weird name for a grocery store. Uh, okay. <laughs> anywho, uh, she went there and she was checking out and the, the cashier was like, do you, um, uh, you, do you want to beg for it? And then my wife thought, like, like beg, like, please, oh. please. So she like stood there like in shock. She's like, and then I, I don't know if I was there or somebody else was there and like, yeah, you want to, you want to beg for the groceries? She's like, oh yeah, like a, like, like a like grocery bag. She's like, yeah, yeah. But for me, another one, last thing, my small town, it, my grocer was called Dick's, like I just said. And when I first started dating her, I was like, hey, can you grab me a Dick's bag? Like a, like a plastic bag. And she's like, yeah, all I have is Target bags. And I'm like, I don't care what brand it is. Just give me a Dick's bag. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, oh my goodness. Just weird, funny things that, yeah. Anywho. Uh, they'll, they'll be in your head forever. You'll, you'll oh, it's never going forever. away. It's a Dick's bag <laughs> till the day I die. Even though I've been, I was in Kansas City for four years and I've been in California for almost two. Like, oh, wow. it's going to be a Dick's bag. So, the mil I'm in the military. So, they move me every like three to four years. Gotcha. So, you know, it is what it is. But oh, it's not bad. Awesome. It's fun. We'll see. That's we'll see awesome. where we go next. Yeah enjoy it california is beautiful oh i would love to be back there oh mm -hmm. in the bay area around san francisco not I too hot not too cold oh i went to san fran but i also went to santa monica like down yeah, there all I that beautiful there. so oh, nice so nice yeah and it's that time of the season it's dry but it's warm and but once you get to the ocean once words once you get to the ocean it, it the temperature changes so it's a little cooler so it feels like oh. fall so that's amazing. Oh, love it. Love it. Love oh, it. one of these days I'll, I'll visit again, but yeah, yeah. let me know. Oh, I'm sure we'll be out here for a few more years. So awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, cool. Abby, uh, genuinely a pleasure to have you on. Uh, I feel like I learned so much. I'm gonna have to rewatch <laughs> this and take notes because, uh, I need to figure out how I can use kombucha and other things and sauerkraut <laughs> to make me healthier. Yes. Uh, sauerkraut. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to think about it. I don't mind it, but I just, I never think about it unless I'm having a brat or a hot dog. As Americans what say. I'll do is, okay. I, I make it like a salad about it. So I'll put cucumber, tomato, uh -huh. and like a heaping scoop or like a quarter cup of sauerkraut. And I'll put olive oil and uh, apple cider vinegar. You could even do balsamic vinegar if you want it a little bit more tasty, but uh -huh. I've been doing apple cider vinegar, mix that up. I mean, like, I mean, really? it's just me, but I love it. Yeah, like, it tastes good. We're all weird. So yeah, okay. <laughs> it's true. I'll have to give it a try. Uh, Abby, uh, do you have any sponsors or affiliates you wanted to plug before we finish up here? Yeah, I do have one sponsor. So Devotee Wear, they are a clothing company, an athletic clothing company based out of Vancouver. Um, I've been with them since June, 2020. So it's wow. been two years already. And they have been nothing but absolutely supportive of me. So um, I have to give a huge shout out to them. Again, they're amazing. And yeah, so yeah, there they are. Amazing quality clothing. And the other amazing thing I love about them um, is the affordability. Like it's not, their oh, prices yeah. are not ridiculous. So oh, good. it's affordable, but you're still getting the quality and the style. Like it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So Love it. Yeah. I wonder if they have, uh, I wonder if they have these in two X. Cause uh, I'm, I mean, I'm wearing my leggings right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke, but yeah. And they do have men's clothing as well. Not as much as women's, uh -huh. um, but they are expanding, okay. but they have some really awesome stuff. Um, but yeah, if you do want to save, you can use my code Bolton 10 to save. Um, but yeah. And they just, uh, they just had a new launch recently. So some of the clothing up, that you see there is some of their newer stuff. So very exciting stuff. They're constantly coming out with new stuff, which is also awesome. Wow. 
30 bucks really yeah that's wow you're so used to like big brands selling 70 dollar leggings so no twenty dollars twenty dollars for that and that's- and that's canadian and i'm pretty sure that's canadian too so you're looking at cheaper america yeah because the u.s dollar is trash so yeah, yeah. so <laughs> It's a big difference compared to some of the other brands. So, and the quality is like, I'm pretty picky, like, especially when training for my fitness routine. Like I like, like, especially leggings like are like very movable and not restrictive. And yes, they're the one company that I've like, I've found that I'm like, okay, like besides Lululemon, like, okay. I like, you guys did it for me. Lululemon. My wife got me the nice, like men's pants, like the slacks. Oh, Oh, good Lord. Like, they're expensive, but they feel so good. Like yeah, that's the thing. I'm a sucker. The quality is good, but yeah, but that's you're the paying thing. for it's the like quality. Devotee wear, will compare like their quality and the comfort and movability of their leggings. Mm-hmm. That's the only other company I found that has compared. So I'm oh. like, you guys in for like, like what, like a quarter of the price? And and that's the thing. They're affordable. So yeah, yeah. It's really Isn't awesome, it's so but... it's hard because there's so many brands out there. Uh, you yes. and not everybody can go out there i spend thousands of dollars because i have my own small brand i'm working on i spend thousands of dollars on like buying all the different blanks trying to find like what what feels good yeah not, not everyone else can do that you know like waste thousands of dollars buying different brands so it's cool that you've already found that and i mean we can you know you're a person of uh, good integrity so uh yeah i'll have to check them out i don't have any clothing brands right now so you know who knows, who knows? yeah <laughs> I have to order that camo shirt. That looked really cool. Oh, that one, that one is a comfy mm-hmm. one. My brother has it. Okay. And uh, and <laughs> yeah. I'll use Abby 10 at checkout. Yes, you got it. All right. Oh. Uh, Abby, enjoy your tan. Best of luck coming off of the second place Thank finish you. in December. Definitely the favorite, uh, in my opinion, to, you know, clench that oh. Olympic qualification. So thank you. So I'm excited. I'm just excited yeah. to get back out there. Like, oh, it's yeah. again, oh, it's unbelievable experience you've been working your butt off you went through covid and you're still here yeah. uh and you get to share the stage with your with your coach and good friend so yeah so it, uh, it's already like honestly it's already a win to me like it's just being here and overcoming what like this prep has brought and again getting to share the stage with my coach it's already just it's already has made my weekend so yeah. you're already winning <sighs> oh Thank you so much, Josh. Thanks for having me on. Like, this was awesome. I always love talking and talking bodybuilding and fitness and sharing that passion. And it's like, oh, it's awesome. Yeah. Well, I've been looking for a a couple strong ladies to to come on the channel and help me with these women's uh, preview and and post show videos. So uh, if you find yourself bored between classes, I could definitely use a co-host. So let (laughs) me know. For sure. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I'd love to be back on. All right. Great. Uh, great Abby. Uh, guys, check out her links, check out my links. If you want to support me in that Avenue subscribe, if you enjoyed this style of content. So that really lets me know that you want to see more content like this. Uh, check out the, I almost said Vancouver, the Toronto pro live stream. It's on my page. Uh, the link is there. I'm not affiliated, but uh, I put it there for easy convenience. Uh, like I said, check out Abby, Abby. Thanks so much for stopping in guys, subscribe, check out her channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks, Josh. Yeah, too easy.